Most everyone in Utah remembers 1896 as the year the territory became a state. I remember it as the year the great brain reform. That's what we called my brother Tom because he was smarter than every kid in town. We'd all been swindled by Tom at least once, so we should know. While most kids were reading Black Beauty and Huckleberry Finn, Tom was studying the encyclopedia. He said his great brain had to know everything. My dog Brownie was my best friend. He was my present from Papa on my fifth birthday. He wasn't a purebred, but he was every bit as smart. He didn't like other dogs. If they wanted to fight, he'd fight them and always win. Every dog in Aidenville was afraid of him. It kind of reminded me of my brother Tom. For being only 12, Tom really had a way with words. I could never tell when he was swindling me or just being a good brother. Like that summer, he wanted to sell me his bike. Having a bike was everything. I should know. The bike Tom wanted to sell me was my Christmas present that year. Tom wanted on a bet, and now he wanted to charge me a nickel a week for three years to buy it back. Morning, Uncle Mark. Morning, Uncle Mark. Uncle Mark was a sheriff. Except when Tom was getting into trouble, there wasn't much for him to do. I wasn't sure why Tom wanted to sell me my bike back. He did say I was a growing boy and needed all the exercise I could get. He said muscles were just as important as brains. I wasn't sure, because here I was buying my own bike. But a nickel a week is half my loan. J.D., if you own your own bike, then you can rent it at a penny a day. That's seven cents a week. After you pay my nickel, you'll make two cents a week profit. What's the catch? No catch. That basil sure had courage. No kid in his right mind would ever wear an outfit like that. He was the first genuine immigrant boy I ever knew. Coca Venus. Hello, boys. Is it a deal? Sounds fair. But you have to assume all responsibility, like keeping it clean and taking care of the tires. Sure. That's Mr. Mercer, my brother Swan. And that's my papa. He was the smartest man in town, but he had one weakness. He was forever buying useless inventions. Nothing I hate worse than being swindled. Remind me to write the president of this company. Mr. Mercer really liked kids. Who does he think he's dealing with? I think he knows, Papa. Are they ready yet, Papa? Hot off the press. And guess who set the type? When can I start helping you, Papa? You already are. Delivering the papers is very important. Typesetting is too difficult for little boys. You learned it. Come on, J.D. Papa, what's more important, brains or muscles? I'd have to say brains, J.D. A man with brains always hires a man with muscles to do his work. See you later. Uh-oh, here comes Mrs. Granger. Good morning, boys. The town snoop. Her hair always looked like it'd been in a dog fight. Here I am getting swindled again. You'd think Tom would show a little mercy on his own brother. What you're seeing happened time and time again. I knew Tom had tricked me. There was nothing I could do about it. It's not fake. Delivering newspapers is part of the deal that goes with the bike. Off you go, J.D. Mama's not going to like this one bit. Papa, 
How did I manage to get the youngest con man in the West for a brother? Three dollars is too much for ordinary puppies. But these aren't ordinary puppies, Mr. Monaire. They'll make excellent sheepdogs. I'll pay you a dollar each. No more. One dollar for females, two dollars for males. Hello, boys. Morning, Miss Thatcher. Good to see you. Very well, you've got a deal. Well, I'm sure you and Mr. Henderson will be satisfied. Henderson? He's buying some puppies, too. Since I talked to him first, he'll probably get first pick. Now, wait a minute. Of course, I can guarantee you first pick for a small down payment. Take 50 cents. Well, since this is a business deal, I'll need a receipt. Mr. Monaire might have been the biggest sheep man in the county, but he was no more a match for the great brain than I was. Tom had just begun another swindle, and I was going to be the victim again. Frank and Alan Jensen's dog, Lady, was the only dog that my brownie didn't chase away when she came around. And Tom's money-loving heart knew just how to take advantage of the situation. What do you mean by rich? A dog like that, he'd make a good sheep dog. Mr. Monaire said he'd pay us $2 for male pups and $1 for females. But I don't know if we could get J.D. to let us make brownie with Lady. Golly, Tom, you think you could talk him into it? Lady's going to be ready for mate in about a week. Sure. But since it won't be easy, all I ask is that I get to have one of the male pups. It's all right by me. Me too. And since Brownie's J.D.'s dog, he'll get the pick of the litter? Seems fair. Good. I'll talk to J.D. about it. See you guys. Frank and Alan were like putty in Tom's hands. Hey, guys. Maybe we can have some fun with the Greek kid. <laughs> Sammy Leeds was a natural-born bully, especially with kids who were younger and smaller than him. Yes. You don't belong here. Sammy was the only kid in town that Tom hadn't knocked his stuffing out of. We've got to get squint. You should see what Sammy Leeds is doing to the Greek kid. Come on. Don't we need Swin? Maybe it's your turn to be pushed around. No one's gonna shove me around. It's your turn, Sammy. How many times do I have to beat you up before your great brain gets the message? The last time. Let's see a great break. Get out of this one. Come on, get him. Come on, get him. Thank you, Tom. Get up, get up. Get up, get up. Get up, get up. All right, come on.
Diddy. Me, Tom. Me, Tom. Just Tom. Just Tom. Facilio. That's a funny name. Not half as funny as just Tom. <laughs> We found out Basil didn't know a word of English. He'd only been in America one week. <laughs>